to my channel. Today I am doing a bunch of pre-filming. I am leaving on vacation for a week. I will not have cell phone service so while you guys are seeing this I am on a houseboat with my family in a beautiful lake called Lake Powell. It's on the border of Arizona and Utah and it's so beautiful and it's very hot so I'm probably really hot right now but enjoy yourselves and I will not be able to comment back and forth with you guys during this time that I am gone because I will not have cell phone service but do not stop commenting because when I get back I am going to devote myself to two hours worth of just commenting back and forth with you guys because that is the best part about me uploading a video so just because I won't be able to respond right then doesn't mean that I will not be reading your comments when I get home so in this video I'm gonna give you guys my favorites for the month of June I have so many fun products here I do have a few products that didn't quite work for me this month and I've been testing them one of them I've been testing off and on for about two months so I wanted to give you guys an update on kind of how I'm feeling about it and then we're gonna jump into the products that I've been loving so the first thing I want to talk about is the Tatcha uh, Satin Skin Mist. So the reason why I bought this is because this was designed for people who have like normal to oily skin. And it almost feels like it is a liquid powder almost. So when you spray it on your skin, it's supposed to somewhat absorb the oils. It's supposed to kind of just balance out your face. It's for normal to oily skin. See the description on it is it's an oil fee, it's an oil free liquid powder face mist and it's supposed to be a satiny smooth skin without adding shine and shake to activate the day. I really love the Tatcha Dewy Skin Mist. This has been something I have absolutely loved, especially during the winter. But I can't use this during the summer because it starts to make me a little bit oily, a little bit greasy. But during the winter, I love to spray this on the face and it kind of just keeps me really hydrated. So I was curious about this because I was like, well, Maybe this is gonna be perfect for me to use during the summer. You know, use this during the winter, use this during the summer, but I don't really notice anything with this product. It's like I put it on, but I don't really notice a difference. Yes, it's very soothing, but I don't feel like it controls the oils. So I think it's a decent spray, but I don't feel like it does much for like any type of oil control. I'm just gonna be honest, even when you shake it, and spray it, I just don't feel like it does a whole lot. And I've been using it off and on for the last two months and I just don't see much of a difference with it. The Dewy Skin Mist, you could see it like right away. You could tell that it was effective. But with this, I just don't really see it. In my opinion, you guys, I love this. This has been like something that I absolutely love. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I have loved the Morphe Continuous uh, Setting Spray, but I'm actually getting to the point where I like this more than I do this. The reason why I stick with this is because I like the aerosol mist that it gives. It's so fine and I don't get any like dots or anything on my face like you would with like MAC Fix Plus or something. With the Glow Recipe, it's almost like you get that mist like you would as an aerosol, but it really like hydrates and melts the foundation in. Like it's so good. Like all the powders, everything just melts. So if, if you're like looking for a new setting spray, oh, I don't know that I'd spend the money on this. I just don't feel like it's worth it, you guys. I, and you guys know I'm a diehard, diehard Tatcha fan. I don't feel like that product is like what it says it is. The next thing I want to talk about is this from Dior. I have used this so many times. This is the uh, Dior Backstage Face and Body Primer. I recently spoke about this in a video that I did of like a few of the new Dior products. I like this, but I don't feel like it's anything like super special. So it hasn't replaced any of my other primers. It kind of has like a silky type of finish. Um, but I don't feel like it's, uh, I don't feel like there's anything special about it. You know, like with a primer, I'm very picky with my primers and my primers need to be special for me to use them. Like the Tatcha Silk Canvas, super special. The Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich Face Face, that is my holy grail. And the reason for that is because it absorbs into my skin and it keeps me hydrated, but not sticky. So I, I am very picky about hydrating primers because I don't want them to be too heavy for my foundation. And the Bobbi Brown isn't. This one is very silky and it does absorb, but I don't feel like it makes much difference. Like it's, 
anything like revolutionary, you know what I mean? So it's a pass for me. The other one I wanna talk about is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation. I recently reviewed this. I've tried it just a few times since I reviewed it, and it's just not my favorite foundation, and you know, I will definitely link my full review of this foundation up in the iCards, but I really had high hopes for this one, but it didn't really, per it didn't really perform the way I needed it to, and yeah, kudos to them for making 100 shades though. I mean, that's pretty incredible. So those are the products that didn't quite work out for me this month, but, oh wait, I got one more, hold on. This is from Becca. So this is the Anti-Fatigue Under Eye Primer. Now, I think this is probably phenomenal for those who set their under eye. For me, I don't set my under eye. So I have tried this so many times over the last few months, I can't get it to work. The only time I've, I've been able to make it look okay is when I've set my under eye, but the problem with setting my under eye is I've never been able to find a way for me to set it without it looking crusty and cakey. Even if I go in very lightly, I've went in with all my different powders. I just think that for me personally, I'm just someone that does not like my under eyes to be set. When I use this and then I go in with concealer, it like really separates my concealer. So it's it's almost like where those lines are and where I have those wrinkles, they become even more separated when I use this product than when I don't. So I really had high hopes for this because I know that this has been a holy grail for so many people, but I do think that it is subjective to people who are you know setting their under eyes with powders and because I don't I just don't feel like it's the right uh, under eye primer for me it does give a really nice like soothing cooling effect to the under eye and I really love that and you only want to use a little bit of this a little bit of it goes a really long way I've noticed that if you get too thick with it it will really start to separate the concealer but it's just not my favorite I don't know, it's just not my favorite. So it is a pass for me. Let's move on to the things that I have just been absolutely loving. So the first thing I gotta talk about has been like, I, I, I am so mad at myself that it took me that long. So as you guys know, the Tarte Creaseless Concealer, I mean, I even have the old packaging. This is the old packaging of the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. This has been a holy grail of mine for the last like two or three years. When they released it in a wand tube form, I was so excited. Recently, you guys know, I have been kind of moving away from having my under eyes really light. So I've been trying to buy my concealers uh, just a few shades lighter than my concealer. So I wasn't using this concealer. I had, I had discovered other concealers that I liked, and so I'd just been using those, like the Jeffree Star or the Marc Jacobs Accomplice. So I kind of pushed this on the back burner and because I didn't have the right shade, but I finally bought this one. This one is 34G. I am, oh my gosh. I, I know that this concealer is not for everyone. I want to make that perfectly clear. This is not for everyone. This concealer is only for that person who has a dry under eye and a little bit goes a long way. But the thing that I love about this is that it completely eliminates all of my wrinkles under my eyes. And even my husband, you know, I've been wearing this for the last like I don't know, like week and a half-ish, two weeks, and he's been noticing, he's like, did when you went in to get Botox, did you get them in your under eye? I'm like, no, they don't put Botox in your under eyes. And he's like, but your wrinkles are like gone. Uh, he And I said, I think it's because of my concealer I've been using. And the other, you know, all the other concealers that I love, uh, they, you know, they do good coverage. They look really natural, really pretty, but they don't kind of erase and illuminate my under eyes to the point where you can't tell, you can't see my wrinkles, and that's what this does. Now don't get me wrong, they're still there, but it gives the illusion of a, of a creaseless look. And I love this concealer. I feel like this is a, the exact opposite of Tarte Shape Tape. So if you use Tarte Shape Tape, you're not gonna like this, because Tarte Shape Tape is more drying, more mattifying under the eye, and it kind of sets. This doesn't. Now, this is pretty glossy when you first put it on, and you kind of blend it out with your finger, but as you're continuing to do your makeup, just go up underneath your eye and pick up any extra product that might be sitting in your wrinkles, and it'll eventually kind of set down, and again, I don't set my under eyes, 
but I love the hydrated look this gives. I love the amount of coverage this gives me and it is, it's been my favorite concealer for many years. Whenever I stop using it and go back to it, I fall back madly in love with it. So again, Tarte Creaseless, man, it's so, so, so good. Okay, next up we have this from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm sure you guys have been hearing me rave about this, but I'm going to talk about it one more time. This is the Eyes to Mesmerize in Rose Gold. This is a cream eyeshadow and it blends so beautifully on the eye. If you've tried this and you're struggling to get it to work, I recommend going in with some sort of an eye primer, whether it's the P. Louise or even concealer. Set it with some powder and lock down your oils underneath and then put this on over top because it seems like if you allow your oils to come through, this will crease and use a little bit of it. You don't need to use a lot to get a good result, but this has been something that I have just really been loving the entire month of June. If you go back to all of my videos, I was wearing that rose gold eye look and it was this because I've been loving it so much. Next up, I forgot to mention this as a concealer. So this is from Ilia and this is the True Skin Serum Concealer. I first bought this, I bought it in the wrong shade. The shades run really dark in my personal opinion. So the shade that works perfect for me is Nutmeg. Is it Nutmeg or Yucca? No, this is the darker one. Um, I have two of them here. So I prefer the shade uh, Yucca. So Yucca is way better than Nutmeg. Nutmeg was the one I first thought was going to match me and it's like as dark as my foundation. So I've kept it just to kind of spot treat on, you know, parts of my face where I want to add a little bit more coverage. This has clean ingredients. It's, you know, from the clean section on the Sephora website. But this is a nice concealer. It's probably my first clean concealer that I have found that I love. It doesn't exaggerate my under eyes and it it is a it's a beautiful lightweight concealer. It reminds me of the Becca Aqua Lumis Perfecting Concealer. So if you've worn this or the Urban Decay Naked Skin, so this kind of has that same vibe. This probably has a little bit more coverage than the Urban Decay Naked Skin, but it definitely reminds me of this one from Becca. So if you have used this one, I'm, al I'm almost out of the one from Becca. This is a nice one, very natural. Both of these are really good, but if you've used this one and you like it, then you will probably know how this one performs. But this is a nice concealer. Okay, next up is for my brows. Now, as you guys know recently, I've been growing out my brows for the last six months and I finally got them to be fuller and more defined. And as you guys know, I prefer uh, the marker to fill in my brows. I feel like it gives just a more natural, like I like that more fluffier, um, what are they calling it? The bushy brow? I don't know what they're calling it, but I like the more, like I like to see the skin through the brow type of thing. So I do, I do like my Dior pencil, but this is about the only pencil that I really like. Recently, Glossier uh, introduced um, a new product called Brow Flick. And I got it in the shade Brown and Blonde. They only come in three shades, which kind of stinks. I wish they had more shades, but I like both of these. Like I'll use the brown on this part of my eyebrow and then the blonde kind of in the front. It really makes like tiny little brow hairs. Like I really, really enjoy it. The one that I've always really loved is the one from MAC. And this is the Shape and Shade Brow Tint. I just got me a new one. But this one is in the shade Lingering. And this also gives these just soft little brow hairs, which is what I like. But I think I like the marker on this one a little bit more because it's a little bit more defined. I love the ones from Urban Decay, the um, brow blade. But the, that marker is thin, but the shades are super dark. So I have to wear the lightest shade in the Urban Decay. If you like that feathered eyebrow look, I really recommend an eyebrow product like this or the one from MAC. The one from MAC is really good as well, but I've been really enjoying that from Glossier. All right, next up we have this palette from Dior. Oh my gosh. I am obsessed with this shade right here, obsessed. I to go into this and just kind of like do this with it, going over like any parts of my cheek, 
Oh, it's so, it is such a light illuminating powder. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. This is like the prettiest shade I have ever seen. It is just unbelievably beautiful, but it's not blinding. So it's the prettiest natural highlighter I've ever seen. In fact, this entire palette was worth every penny because of this shade. Like I'm gonna run out of the shade before I run out of anything. It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. I wanna talk about these from ColourPop. Now I just discovered these just a few days ago, but I am hooked on these. This is called the ColourPop Light Sticks and I love these, oh my gosh. I'm actually taking these on vacation with me. This one, well that was crooked as all hell. This is like Charlotte Tilbury quality in my opinion. So this one is the shade Bullseye. This one is the shade Starbright, and this one is the shade Hooked. This is the blush. Look at those blinding highlighters. Oh my gosh, they are so beautiful on the skin. They're lightweight and they melt. Like, they're $8 and they literally melt into the skin. I am obsessed with these. So natural, so beautiful, it melts right into the skin. If you're into that, like glistened, glossy looking skin right now for the summer, this is like the best. Like you have to have it in your collection. It's so good. Next up, I wanna talk about this. And this is from Natasha Denona. These are called Mark Your Liquid Lips and I have it in the shade Nude Metallica. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It is so beautiful. Uh, I will say it can be a little drying. You guys know my favorite trick is to put whatever I have on my lid on my lips, you know, just to kind of match. I like to match whatever's on my lid, I like to put it on my lips. With this, I don't need to. It is so beautiful, so, so, so beautiful. Now this can be a tad bit drying, so just know that, but, the, but what I do like about it is that it lasts like forever, like it's a, very long wearing metallic lips. My favorite uh, YouTuber, a makeup artist here on YouTube is Tenny Panosian. I've always loved her just natural, beautiful looks. She doesn't do like over the top eyeshadow looks or over the top makeup, and that's what I love about her the most. And she and uh, Makeup by Denise, which is, oh my gosh, Makeup by Denise, she has like the same vibe. Just very beautiful, natural, beautiful eyeshadow looks and beautiful skin and they teamed up with Bobbi Brown. So Makeup by Denise released the shade East Coast Slay and this is in the Crushed Liquid Lip. I love this shade. I don't know if you guys know about the Crushed Liquid Lip from Bobbi Brown. The first shade I ever bought was the shade Lachey Baby. It kind of is like a pastel pink. Uh, with a peach undertone. That's what Lachey Baby looks like over my marker. But this is a long lasting lip gloss. So it's almost like a satin lip, but with a gloss, um, with a glossy finish. So it's pretty long lasting and pretty opaque for what they are. But this one, I love this East Coast Slay. It is such a beautiful shade. And then we have uh, West Coast Bay, and that is the shade that Tenny Panosian collaborated with, um, and I love it. It's a beautiful brown. It goes with any like warm tone makeup look, but I really like this formula. It is a nice, hydrating, uh, long wearing lip gloss. It really is pretty, it is long wearing. I'm really impressed with the formula from these crushed liquid lipsticks. So I wanted to include this into this video. Next up, this is my sweet addiction. Like this is what I spoil myself with. I've had this for a while and I am obsessed with it. I have one in my makeup room and I have one upstairs in my bathroom that I put it on my lips every single night. I love this so much. So this is from Tatcha and this is the Camellia Gold Spun Lip Balm and I love this. I love it. Mm, I'm, um, it's kind of has a little bit of a hint of a lemon scent to it. It's so fresh and so hydrating and I wear it while I'm getting my, you know, putting on my makeup and then obviously the one up in my bathroom I put on before I go to bed. I used to use the Dior, I think it was the Cream de Rose uh, lip gloss. It was in a little packaging like this and mm, 
I loved it so much and it's discontinued. I think they have one now that's called the Dior Cream. Um, I think they have it in Apricot. Um, but I don't like that one as much as I like the Cream de Rose, but I love this. So this has kind of replaced it and I'm obsessed with it. This is a stupid expensive. This is what I spoil myself with. I love the scent of this. I love the way it makes my lips feel. It keeps my lips so hydrated. This is something that I stocked up on during the Sephora spring sale. So I got 20% off of this one and 20% off the one that I have up in my bathroom. I don't feel as guilty when I save money when I buy it. So anyways, so I have two eyeshadow palettes that I've not stopped using pretty much the entire month of June and it's these two. So this is the uh, KKW Beauty Classic Palette. This is just that palette that I reach for whenever, like for example, when I'm wearing this, uh, you know, the Charlotte Tilbury um, Eyes to Mesmerize. I love this palette with that. I also love to mix and match these shades with these scattered uh, foiled eyeshadows from um, the scattered, what are these called? The uh, scattered light glitter eyeshadows from Hourglass. I love the shade Smoke. It's kind of like a lavender shade. In fact, I was wearing this palette with the scattered light from Hourglass in the shade Smoke in my Q and A with my husband and I. So in that in that uh, that makeup look, I was wearing this shade and this shade and then this Smoke from Hourglass. So. This is just that palette that I reach for when I want those neutral tones. I love the way this blends out. I love the pigmentation. I just, I really like this palette. I love it. It's one of my favorites. But I also really love this NARS Skin Deep. Now, I've been using the heck out of this recently. I'm actually wearing this palette right now in my eyes. I started with this and I deepened it with this and then I put this all over my lid. So this is one that I've just been reaching for when I want more of the cooler toned um, eyeshadows, but just in a very light, easy to blend. Both of these palettes are very dependable for me and both blend out very beautifully and I love them both. They're very, very good palettes. The other thing that I have been using that I've never talked about here, I don't think I've ever talked about this on my channel, and it's this. There's things that I hate about it. I'm going to be honest with you though. So this is an eyelash curler that heats up. Now, because I get ready, I don't get ready in my bathroom. So if I got ready in my bathroom, then I would just heat up my um, eyelash curler with a blow dryer. It would give me the same effect. But because I don't get ready, all of my beauty room is downstairs. And so all of my, you know, I don't have a blow dryer down here with me. You have to use two AAA batteries. I think I've replaced the batteries like once. Uh, so the batteries last quite a long time. The thing that you do have to be careful with it is it can get a little bit hot and it kind, and if it gets too hot, it can, you know, you kind of got to be careful because you don't want it to like burn your eyelid. But I love how this, when I use this, my lashes stay curled all day long, all day. So when I turn it on, I will leave it on for about 30 seconds before I go in with each eye. And I just go in and I do, I wish that the, I wish that this was a little bit easier to do because sometimes it's a little bit harder to do it with the thumb. So like I said, there's things that I don't like about this. I'm actually gonna look for a better one, one that's maybe a little bit easier to use because I like having it already heated up where I don't have to pull out my blow dryer and heat up my eyelash curler. So I like that whole thing of it, but this is not like my favorite, but I do like having a heated, uh, eyelash curlers. So, you know, if you have eyelashes that you're struggling with trying to get them to stay up, then I recommend a heated eyelash curler. I don't know that I would recommend this exact style. Like I said, I am going to be trying to find maybe a different one that's maybe a little bit better than this one. I like this one. I don't love it, but I do like having a eyelash curler that heats up. So that's it for all of my favorites for the month of June. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I cannot believe it's going to be, it's July right now. It's crazy to me that we are now starting the month of July. Like, oh, it makes me sad. It really does. It makes me sad. I really love the summertime. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys again for all the love that you guys show me and this channel. It means the world to me. And don't forget to comment down below. And as soon as I get back from vacation, I will be commenting back and forth with you guys. I really appreciate your guys' support and I love you all so much.
Bye.